Hi, my name is Tim and you're welcome to another edition of Smelly Sweet. Today I'm ranking my surge of collection from spot number 9 to spot number 1 because I have currently 9 fragrances in my collection from surge of. I've owned a couple of more, I've owned Dolce Amalfi. When I bought it I thought myself wearing it in the summertime but it felt a little bit too cloying for that so I sold it. I can regret that a little bit today because it would have been a great fragrance for an early spring here in Sweden. I've also owned Commandante. Commandante was a blind buy and I bought it based on some of the notes. Tobacco and leather and incense I believe or smoke. It was something I read about being in a smoky tobacco leather fragrance. Just that must be like me. I said it must have it with the name Commandante that suggests boss fragrance, kind of a, a powerful fragrance. Boy, was I disappointed when I got to smell it. It smelled like a playboy, like a toy boy running around wanting to be with the big boys. You know, you want to bomb up, <laughs> kind of like that. <laughs> so I had to sell it. And I also got to think, me. it also got me to think of a design fragrance, something like uh, Paco Rabanne, one million or something in that category. But it, it was a complex fragrance because it had a, quite a few different turns in its lifetime but I couldn't get that out of my head. So, now we dive in to my spot number 9 and that is Surge of Symphonium. From the Stone Collection I believe it is, or the 177, not so sure. No, I do love the scent of this one. Uh, you have some oranges and mandarins in the opening mixed with that fine Belgian chocolate. You also have some vanilla, some, I believe there's two kinds of ouds in this one. So it is a lovely piece of art this one but it just ends up at spot number nine smelly sweet how are you thinking well I don't use it because I think it leans to feminine so it is my wife's fragrance she is the one that uses it even if I'm the one that bought it and thought that I would use it but she wouldn't let me sell it because she likes it that much on spot number eight we have Sage of Mephisto citruses flores woods but it kind of reminds me of Creed Silver Mountain Water. So it isn't, it isn't that original. It's hard to be that today, by the way. But just let me think of that. And the longevity of this one, five to six hours on my skin, isn't good enough either with kind of a moderate projection. But I do enjoy the opening most of this one. After that, I feel it's kind of losing its power. Another fragrance in the same category is Renaissance. Now, here again, a lovely citrus opening, very grapefruit, so um, the opening is magic. But I feel that is all there is to it, because after the opening, very weak, not the best longevity. But yet again, this one is something that my wife uses a lot for work, because it doesn't offend anybody and it sits very close to the skin. So on spot number 7 it was, no, 6, 9, 8, 7, Fuck, I can't talk count anymore. Spot number seven, Renaissance. On spot number six, here we are at spot number six, is Cours del Sur 2. You have a lovely mango in this one and you have a lovely dry down in a milky dry down. Yet again, it's, I feel it might lean a little bit too feminine for me. Uh, so my wife uses it a lot, but the mango in the opening combined with some small hints of uh, pineapple, I believe it is, and the Milky Dry is amazing fragrance actually, a, a beautiful scent, but not for, for me to wear, I prefer it on my wife. And the longevity is pretty good on this one. I do think it lasts around 8 to 9 hours without over exaggerating, with a pretty solid sillage and projection as well. Now on spot number 5, we have Golan Dalla. I did review review about for this one a while back. I do get cinnamon, I do get cardamom, I believe it's cardamom, and I do get um, the nutmeg. If you look it up on Frangentic, I believe it's listed as oriental notes, but those, those are the spices I can pick up. There's also coffee, coffee listed here, and many people say that they can't detect the coffee in this one, but if you think about the bitterness in this, in this fragrance, kind of a bitterness, that is the coffee. And you also have some chocolate in the dry down and the rose. This oud listed. I don't pick up much of the oud, but the rose is there. A very soft but juicy rose. 
with a great longevity. We are pushing the 9 hour mark with this one with a, a, not the strongest Siage, but that is a good thing with this one because it would be overpowering otherwise. So spot number five, Golden Dalla. On spot number four, we have Uden Overdose. Now, this isn't that similar to Uden. The, the first one. Uden is a sweet van vanillic uh, citrus fragrance. This is a dirty citrus fragrance and I think it is unique because the uniqueness that a citrus fragrance usually always feels kind of fresh, clean and that but here the dirty undertone is magic with this one and the, I believe that is the amber. I really do appreciate this one. I've used it a lot. My wife says that she doesn't like it at some stages. I mean, she says that it is feels soapy to her. I don't get that. I think it is dirty, not soapy. <laughs> anyway, longevity of this one is around six hours with a kind of a, a weak to moderate projection, and the sillage isn't the biggest either. But the scent is to die for. No, spot three, two, and one. Man, I've been. Flipping these around, so eventually I decided for, for the order I'm going with, and I'm still, that can change tomorrow. But on spot number three, we have Naxos. Now, Naxos is uh, also something that I struggled with in the start when I first tried it out. I felt it was too cloying, too strong, but going back to it some couple of times, eventually I ended up with the bottle. Now, you have a, a lovely lavender in here, uh, and the, I feel that the lavender is pretty unique. Uh, unique. I haven't discovered lavender done this way in any other fragrance. But you also have the honey and tobacco, of course, what this fragrance is mostly about. <laughs> so smooth. It is so damn smooth. Even if, if the honey can come off sharp, the lavender can come off sharp. When it all blends together, it's just so, such a smooth, round fragrance. Truly, with longevity as well, I won't over exaggerate, I try to not do that, but 10 hours I will give you with a good, strong projection and sillage as well. So on spot number three, you've all heard about it before, Naxos. On spot number two, we went with Torino 21. I recently did a review about this one. You have a lot of citruses here in the opening. You have a lot of greenness almost not not, not not like a green grass uh, kind of a phrase more like a spice i would say the basil is the most prominent the mint in here as well but i don't think of spare mint i think of the mint that you use in a mojito so for me <laughs> it's lovely it's just from the jtc line to you know, 21 longevity and stuff check out my my review if you would like to but on spot number two we have jtc Torino 21. So on spot number one, we do find Ivory Root from the JTC line. Man, I love this fragrance. <laughs> this is so good. The sandalwood in here, the cedar in here, it is to die for. The spices, I believe, I've said in my cold weather video fragrances, I said that this kind of reminds me of rehab. And I try them, compare them side by side, yesterday and the day before yesterday as well just to find out what is what I think is the resemblance in here well even if it's not listed I do pick up a kind of a tobacco note from this one but I also do pick up the sandalwood and I would be damned if Serge of an initial hasn't used the same source and the same supplier for the sandalwood and the fragrances now is there anything more to say about this one? You need to try it. It's so good. Longevity, yet again, 9, 10 hours with a good projection and <laughs> lovely fragrance. Now, that was all for today. Oh, I forgot to say, my wife loves this one on me, which just is an extra thumbs up. Now, until the next time, everybody, you know what to do. Stay well and be safe. Bye.